Hello everyone, uh, my name is Klaus Aranha from the University of Tsukuba and today I introduce the course Experiment Design for Computer Sciences uh, from the Department of Computer Sciences. The idea of this course is to introduce to you how to do a proper experiment, how to plan this experiment, how to gather the data, analyze and draw conclusions. So this is a very important course for all of you who are planning to be uh, computer scientists. Uh, many of you will have to include experiment in your analysis. And in this course, I want to tell to you the, the right things to do and the not so right things to do when preparing an experiment. Uh, there is a short description of the syllabus. You can see the, the syllabus in the, in the course line. The idea is that Based on the scientific method, uh, gathering experiments is one of the important parts of this, and we'll study the general idea of the methods behind this. So you can see this course, I try to introduce this idea in a way that might be similar to some of the you, that the idea of plan, do, check, action. So before you do an experiment, for many of you, uh, doing an experiment is just, okay, I run the program, I get the data, I put it in my report, and it's done. And I want to give you, to put into your minds the idea that doing an experiment, gathering the data of the experiment is the smallest part of the experiment. Before the experiment, you need to plan what you're going to do. Make sure that your plan makes sense, and make sure that your plan will guarantee you a fair and robust experiment. You gather the data, and if you have a good plan, gathering the data is automatic. You let, leave the computer running, you get the data, and that's done. Now you have to analyze the data, which is most, very important. And after you analyze, you have to think upon your analysis. What are the correct conclusions that you can draw from your experiment? Uh, this course came from the idea that I observed many students do the same errors again and again in thesis defenses, in Zemi presentations, in papers. Some of the errors uh, are included in this slide. So in many cases, I see students that run a computer program, measure a time, and put the time on the paper. And if you think about it, do you think that you could run that program again and get exactly the same running time, not even a nanosecond of difference? Well. That's a noise, right? Uh, you run the program three times and you get three slightly different running times for that program. What is the correct one? How do you determine that, right? Uh, we have many students who do comparison experiments between standard methods and proposed methods. And in these experiments, the standard methods, it's like, okay, uh, the student last year wrote a run this experiment and wrote a table. I'm using this data from the table. And here's my proposed method that I fine-tuned the, I fine -tuned the parameters. I rewrote it many times. I ran the experiment many times. And finally, my, my, my proposed method is better than the last year. And if you stop to think about it, that's not really fair. Is, are you really showing that your method in general is better than the one that you are comparing against? Or are you showing that if you really put an effort, you can do, you can get over it in one experiment? So how general is that comparison? Uh, many times the experiments are not reproducible. So there is no information in the thesis or in the reports that will allow future students to use that data again. And that's why the student from the previous example did not run the code from his uh, antecedent student, because the antecedent student did not leave the code for him to run. So reproducibility is also super important. Falsiability, and I see this a lot in um, experiment done with inter human interfaces. Uh, the, the experiments are done using only students from the laboratory who already know how to use the computer system. And there are surveys that ask some very uh, simple questions with no clear comparison, no clear baseline. So do you think that this, um, do you think that this interface is nice? Do you think it? Are you going to tell to my face that the interface is nice and the person doing the experiment will go, hey, you know what? Yeah, yeah, it's a nice interface, very good. 
and then they shouldn't get the report that and put on the report. Eight people out of 10 told that my interface was really nice. So my experiment is a success. So yeah, that's experiment is not really falsifiable, is it? We're gonna talk about this later. And in many, many, almost all of the cases, the experimental conditions and the assumptions are not clear. Is this data an average of many experiments or from only one experiment? Uh, what is the data that was used? Um, what, is this a mean? Is this a median? Uh, is there, so you're showing some uh, deviation. What is the source of this deviation? So the final result of all these errors is the same. The result that the ex student is presenting does not support the conclusions that he wanted to show. Sometimes you have, I, I have seen the presentations where the experiment said one thing and the student said something completely different. In order to avoid that, I have established this course with some very basic uh, ideas, some very basic, um, how do you say, some very basic ideas for you to do some reliable and robust experiments for computer sciences. Now, this is not a problem only with students. Uh, this is a problem that you see very often in papers, in journal papers, in conference papers, sometimes in very big uh, journals. Uh, the thing is that we in computer science, we do not have a formal education in experiment design. If you go to the medicine, if you go to biology, uh, chemistry, um, uh, even um, well, physics, of course, social sciences, in many of these disciplines, there are subjects about how do you do an experiment? How do you do um, a, how do you analyze an experiment? So how do you design an experiment? And this is something that is many times not done in computer science. And when it's done, the proper necessity of that is not clarified. Uh, when I was an undergrad student, we had a physics experiment lecture where we would drop some balls and calculate the, 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 the gravity from the speed of the balls. And that was uh, experiment design. And no one in that course said that what I was doing for physics, I also would need to do for computer science. And many people think, oh, the computer, it's a simulation. It's perfect. We don't need to replicate, replicate it. There is no errors. There is no noise. And there is a lot of noise. There is a lot of things that need to be designed. Uh, an experiment in computer science needs to be as rigorous, if not more, than experiment in physics, in uh, social sciences, in biology, medicine, etc. Now, uh, in the last five years, I have noticed that the situation has gotten much better. For instance, in large conferences, you usually cannot get a paper accepted anymore if there's not at least any statistical analysis of your uh, results. But there is still a lot of work to be done. So, and if this work is not done, we might face what is called a reproducibility crisis. There was a reproducibility crisis a few years ago in social sciences. We, they saw that many papers, they could not reproduce the results. And that was because of poor experimental design that was made 10, 20, 30 years ago. And if we don't be careful, a lot of the papers that are coming out today, they will not be reproducible. If, and if they are not reproducible, what that means is that whatever conclusion they, they made, it's 99% useless. You don't want your research to be useless, do you? Unless you want to graduate and go to, to, to a company right away and forget that you have ever been in a master's degree. But even then, and this is one something we're gonna talk, even in companies, you need to do experiment design. You're not publishing a paper, but you need to show, for instance, if you're building a, a system that needs to be robust and that needs to execute within a certain time, you need to prove that your system has a minimum and a maximum rate of errors or a minimum and a maximum executing time. And to do that, you will need to do an experiment. So this is not only for scientists, this is very important for engineers as well. So what are we going to learn in this course? The basic idea of this course is that you are going to learn how to design experiments for your own research, how to analyze your experimental data, 
and how to read and criticize scientific experiments. And this last point is very important. Um, it's not only learning experiment design for your own experiments. As a scientist, you have also the duty to be able to look at a newspaper talking about some scientific discovery or to look at some other paper and know if that paper is reliable or not. To know if the science, if the results being proposed are backed by experiment or not. Okay. Uh, so, for instance, right now we have the coronavirus crisis, and there is a lot of news coming out, some very good sciences from epidemiologists, and some not very good sciences from other people, uh, Elon Musk. But, <clears throat> so, you need to be able to actually have scientific background, to look to a research and say, look, this research I'm looking right now, it's not backed up by the data. The experiments do not support this hypothesis. So that's your whole role. You're being trained as a, master, as a master degree student. You're training as a graduate student, as a scientist. And you also have a duty to use your knowledge to point to society what is good science and what is bad science. What is science that is supported by data and what is science that is not supported by data. Each of us is a potential fact checker in the world. So we need to be able to do the best out of this. Okay, so more in more detail, what is an experiment? Okay, so we're going to talk about what is an experiment, the characteristics of an experiment, what is a reproducible experiment, what is a reliable experiment, how we design the experiment. So remember, plan, act, check do so the plan part how do you plan an experiment and we're going to talk about pitfalls things that if you do to your experiment the results will not be reliable or in a word that you might also be familiar with how do you introduce bias to your experiment if you know how to introduce bias into your experiment you also know how to avoid bias in your experiment and this is very important so, and we are also in, in a more technical way, we are also going to study statistical tools for analyzing experimental data. So we're going to talk about uh, some basic statistics, median, mean, uh, confidence intervals. We're going to talk about statistical inferences. How do we calculate if uh, some set of data is, is, if a difference is statistically significant or is that not statistically significant? And we're going to talk about special cases for statistical inferences, pair tests, single tests, multiple sample tests, etc. The materials of this course, they can be found in the Manaba system. So you can see the link over there. If you are a member of the University of Tsukuba, you can access this. If you are not enrolled on this course, if you're enrolled on this course, you can access this link automatically. If you're not enrolled on this course, you can access this material using the self-registration code that is on the screen right now. If you are not a student at the University of Tsukuba, you can access this material uh, using the GitHub link that you can see below. Almost all of the material is on the GitHub link. There are a few papers that are not publicly available and there are a few, uh, you cannot access the reports, but other than that, you can access everything. Okay. Uh, these materials that you are seeing, the main materials for this course are the lecture notes. And the lecture notes are based on the design and analysis of experiment materials produced by Felipe Campello from the University of Aston. Thank you, Felipe. And everything that you see that is cool will say, oh, this is very informative. This is very nice. This is thanks to Felipe. Anything that you see that is a mistake, this is because of me. So please leave a notice on GitHub if you see any mistakes on these materials. Uh, now, this book, uh, no, sorry, this course is mainly based on the, uh, on the lecture notes. There is no one textbook for this course, but if you want a main textbook to study the technical parts, it's Design and Analysis of Experiment by Douglas Montgomery. So this will top the, this book will uh, survey most of the technical parts of this course. Uh, there are other links, other texts in Manaba. Every lesson I will give a series of recommended links that you can follow as well. 
Now, one thing that is very important is that this course is an introduction to experimental design. Every experiment is different. So maybe your experiment uses some different type of data here or has different assumptions or have different conditions. And in that case, the, some of the, the methods that we are introduced in this course may not apply directly to your experiment. However, the general idea applies. So the general idea that we are going to teach here, it's, uh, it will be available, to, uh, it will be uh, useful for a large uh, variety of experiments in computer science. And if the specific methods do not apply to your specific experiment, you should have enough knowledge to go after the material, the, the specific test that you need. So the idea here is that you're gonna learn the basics about experiment design and analysis, and you are expected to continue your learning. Being a scientist is studying always, learning new things always. So you are expected to study more ways of testing data, more ways of analyzing data by yourself, okay? Now, uh, how is this course organized? This course is organized of in le regular lectures like this one and review and discussion lectures. Now, the re regular lectures, uh, you're gonna see the, um, the videos like this. These are offline videos. You can download them and watch them anytime. They will be published at the regular time of the lecture. So we have the lecture calendar. The video will be published on the day of the lecture calendar. You can see this later. However, I recommend that you see the video and read the materials as soon as possible because you will need the information from the video to write your reports, okay? Also, we have uh, review and discussion lectures. In the review and discussion lectures, uh, they will take place using an online meeting tool. I have not defined it yet, maybe Zoom, maybe YouTube Live, maybe Twitch, maybe Nico Nico Doga, I don't know. Uh, in this, the idea is that everyone will log in at the same time. I will review some of the reports. I will maybe do a case study and you can ask questions about anything regarding the lecture. Now, usually uh, uh, when the lecture is presential and not online, I like to stop the lecture many times and ask questions of the students, ask their opinions and have some class discussions. This time it's not possible. So please use the forums in Manaba or the KGBAN and ask any questions you want. It can be something that you don't understand. It can be something that you thought that was important. It was something that you disagree. That's fine. Uh, for instance, I was talking about that this course only touches a few topics. We're only going to talk about inferential statistics. We are not going to talk about Bayesian statistics. Uh, we're not going to talk about other kinds of ways that are used to uh, do data analysis. So if you want to talk about those, we use the forums, use the KGBAN in Manaba. If you're not a student at the University of Tsukuba, but you want to join the discussion, uh, leave a comment. The comments are moderated to avoid spam, but if you have any interesting questions, I will be happy to answer in the YouTube comments. Now, this is the lecture calendar. Today, we're going to give an introduction about what is an experiment in the next video. Uh, the next week, we're going to talk about point and interval indicators. And then we're going to spend two weeks talking about uh, statistical inference testing. And then uh, we're going to have the first review and discussion lecture in the beginning of June. Uh, during June, we're going to talk, touch some more advanced topics like foreign analysis, ANOVA, and blocking and parameter selection. Then we have a second case study. And you can see here we have the deadlines for the three reports. The first reporting is in two weeks from now. The second report is in the middle of June. The last report is in the beginning of July. So what are those reports? So the grading of this course is based on two reports. There is no final examination. The first report you have to submit before lecture three. The second report you submit before lecture seven. And the third report you uh, submit after lecture 10. And these reports are weighted 30, 30, and 40. And if you remember the rules of Tsukuba University, you need uh, six, uh, 0 0.6 or more to pass the class and 0 0.9 or more to get an A+. Each report is a mini paper 
So it's basically you're going to discuss a scientific idea, a scientific hypothesis, and you are going to describe and design the experiment to verify that hypothesis. You will do a data analysis based on your experience. You collect the data for your experiment. You do a data analysis and you are going to discuss the results. The idea is that in this mini paper, you are going to use the techniques that you have studied in the course so far. So for the first report, you are supposed to make sure that you're using all the techniques that we teach in lecture one and two. In the second report, you have to use the techniques that we discussed from lecture one to six. And in the third report, you have to use all the techniques that are discussed in the course. Of course, you have to use the techniques that are appropriate for your experiment, okay? So about the report, the report must be submitted in English. I will not grade you if you have some English mistakes, but I will ask you that the report needs to be intelligible, okay? Uh, besides the report text, the report must be submitted in PDF format, but you also must include any files that are necessary to reproduce the experiments in your report. So here it's very important. I'm going to uh, say over and over again the importance of reproducible research. And in these reports, you are supposed to be reproducible as well. So you need to, if you are using data, you have to submit the data that you are using. Uh, if you're using code to generate the data, you have to submit this code. If you're using script to generate statistical analysis and figures, you have to submit the script as well. And the easiest way to do all of this is to use R Markdown for your, for, to generate your report. I'm going to put some links in Manaba and on the GitHub on the R tutorial. Uh, but using R Markdown, R Markdown is similar to um, Jupyter Notebook, if you are familiar with no Jupyter Notebook, but it's based on R, and it has many um, useful um, features to produce a PDF report using R Markdown. The report will be graded by the correctness of the analysis and the quality of the discussion, but not on the result of the experiments. So one thing that I will uh, talk about in the next video is that you must first design the, your entire experiment. How are you going to do the experiment? How are you going to collect the data? And what is your analysis method? And if you do all of that, it might happen that you are going to do an experiment like this. Oh, I'm going to compare algorithm A and algorithm B because I think that algorithm B is better than A because of these and these and these reasons and you do your experiment, and the result of your experiment is that, no, algorithm A is not better than algorithm B. And many students think, oh, my experiments show that algorithm A is not better than B. I'm lost, I cannot graduate, the world is done. And in fact, there are some people that think like that, but that's not science. Science is not knowing if you're right or not. If you know the results before you do the experiment, why are you doing the experiment, right? So science is not knowing. And in this course, we're like that. If you propose an experiment to say that you think that A is better than B, but the result is that A is not better than B, that's great. You learned something new. You need to be honest. The idea is that we're doing honest experiments here, okay? So I did, I expected A to be better. This is the experiment, my experiment design. These are my data. And in the result, it showed that A was not really better than B. And I think that the reason was this and that. And you do that and that's perfectly fine, okay? Uh, last point, you are encouraged to use your own research topic. So the idea that I have here is that this course will be useful for your research. So if you already decided your research team or if you have a general idea of what is your research team, Feel free to do reports related to your research. It doesn't need to be exactly your research, but it can be the same area. It can be an analysis of something else in the literature. That's fine. But the idea is that this is a win-win. You are doing the reports for this course, but you are also advancing your research. So I win, you win, your advisor wins. Great for everyone. If you cannot do that, that's fine. Uh, in, the, in the past years, students did reports based on experiments in the kitchen. Cooking is a great way to do experiments. Uh, 
some students did experiments related to physical activities, that's fine. Some students did experiments regarding going around and observing the world, that's okay as well. Okay, final point, I want to talk about the computer science English program. So the computer science English program is a sub program in the computer science department. The idea is that we, we, are, we make available several lectures in English so you can graduate, you can get all your graduate requirements only taking courses in English, okay? If you plan to take all your courses in English, I encourage you to enroll in this program. This will give us information about what is the demand for courses in English in uh, our department, okay? So to enroll in this program, you need to send an email with your name in Roman letters. And if you have a name in kanji, you send a, your name in kanji as well. And send your student ID to this mail address that you see right now, s uh, slash uh, dash d30 at cs.scuba.ac.jp. Uh, in your email, you write, I want to enroll in the computer science English program. If you're going to take your English classes, all your classes in English anyway, uh, you will already satisfy all the requirements of this program. If you decide that you do not want to take all your classes in English, if you take more than half your classes in Japanese in the end, there is no penalty to join in this program. You will just be removed from the computer science English program, but there is no penalty for you. You're just a regular computer science student again, okay? If you want more information about what is the Computer Science English program, what courses are available, please see the new student orientation course on Manaba. There is orientation material for the Computer Science English program there. Okay, so that's the end of the material. And to finish, I just want to do a quick self-introduction. As I said in the beginning, my name is Klaus. I am from Brazil. I have been in, working in Scuba University since 2012. Uh, my research topics are evolutionary algorithms and artificial life. If you are interested in these topics, please feel free to talk to me at any time. And my hobbies are game programming and astronomy. Also, feel free to reach out to talk for those. I'm happy to talk. And one thing that I want to say in this course is that even after this course is finished, if you need help with the experimental design in your, uh, in your research, feel free to contact me. Uh, past students of this course have come back to me time and time again to show, oh, this is the manuscript of my paper. What do you think about my experimental analysis? What do you think about my experimental design? And I'm happy to answer to talk about these questions. So feel free to reach out. Okay, this is done. Uh, the material that you've seen is um, Creative Commons. You are welcome to copy, reuse, and remodify. Uh, some of the images are made by other authors. All of these images, they have permission to be redistributed and you can see the credits for the images in the last slide. Thank you very much. And I see you in the next uh, video. Bye-bye.